Why, hello there, everybody, and welcome back to Hardcore Heroes. You guys are in town in Anvil. You are safe and sound in Jacob's Pub. Um, and for the first time, you hear music. Soft music. Uh, uh, performed by a small trio of halflings, often one side of the bar. There are a few people standing about, ordering some drinks. As it's, you know, it's afternoon. Those people that are done with their work early are here to hang. Um, well, I don't this think is not up for the books. Yeah, I don't think Van goes nuts on, like, the celebration, like, feasting or anything. I think he just, he's glad to finally be eating food made in civilization. Like, not just something that was roasted over a fire. And mm -hmm. I think he just kind of has a good meal, has some stuff to drink, and eventually goes to bed and just sleeps like a rock. I begin telling the wild story of our shipwreck and adventures thereafter and of how these brave troops uh, of us were uh, representing a young gnome that uh, was selling his ale far and wide. Uh, it was the best ale. It was the ale of a, of a baroness uh, and of the church. And we were expanding our operations. But we're unfortunately, our ship was beset by a terrible storm that uh, caused us to shipwreck and lose our many barrels of ale uh, that we were transporting to Redport. And unfortunately, when we arrived on shore, we're beset by murderous beasts with long, sharpened fangs and decorated in the skulls of fallen combatants. And while we were able to fight them off, and uh, escape with our lives. The young brewmaster, Corny, Corny the Great, was lost to us at the end of a terrible spear. And we were able to recover just these last like bits of his ingredients. And we are just distraught as we escaped uh, from him and just lost. We have no idea what to do next. This is a sad and heart-rending tale People are sad. <laughs> I just begin telling that story to like all of the people in the tavern that will listen to me. Well, give and me a charisma check. Please. Absolutely. I pass. You pass quite well. Yeah. Uh, people listen to your story. They ask your names. They get the whole party's names and. Mm -hmm. um, People are quite interested in your tales of adventure. You know, yeah, I, I introduce everybody. I, I am Croak, the uh, the the merchant and businessman that was going to be selling all the the fine ales, the uh, Corny, the Magnificent, um, and this is uh, this is Malachi the Wise. He's a wizard of tremendous power, and one of the reasons we were able to successfully defend ourselves from such vicious, seven foot tall, murderous beasts on the island, and of course. The um, uh, Van Helsing, the blessed born uh, cleric of cheese, mighty and strong. He was um, there to officially bless the wines that we were going to sell uh, for sacramental purposes to the churches in Redport. And uh, I, I just distraught and I, I have these, I eventually try to find amongst the crowds of people listening and I tell the story throughout the night. I tried to tell the story to um, a like the tavern owner or like a brewmaster, it's someone that's supplying the ales. Mm -hmm. And I eventually say, I I'm just at a loss of of what to do now that uh, we've lost our casket of ales. Uh, the only thing that we were able to get from this magnificent wines um, were these special herbs. These are the ingredients that in heighten the the power of the of the ale to new levels. And I have so few of them. I, I want them in the right hands, but I, I just, uh, my ordeal has shaken me. Wow, that is such a wonderful tell. Now, do you have that recipe on you? Oh, the, the recipe uh, I fear was uh, taken to the grave with, uh, with Mr. Corn of the Magnificent, but I do know that he always told me it was a spiced and mulled wine of normal proportions, uh, made from mulberry and uh, just a, the, the, I don't know, 
few hops and and other ingredients uh, that I I'd tell him in in time. Um, and uh, and he always used these, and I I, I produced the uh, the ingredients I took off of uh, the hog goblin area. He said that. At introducing these at the very end of the molding process, uh, you steeped in a in a hard uh, hard liquor, and then introduced at the end as the wine aged would elevate it to, to new levels and heights of flavor. That is most interesting. Can I see what those are? I've never heard of such. Well, I'll show them to you. Yeah, and I, I, I'm careful to not let him like take them, but mm -hmm. I, I demonstrate each of the of the herbs I picked up off of. He of tries Connie. to pick one up to smell it at least. I'll let him like like smell a little bit of it or like get a feel for it, but not mm -hmm. like take and hold and keep. Right. Okay. So he pokes around a little and goes, "Well, these are certainly interesting." Um, shame about your friend. It's our it, hard it really times is. we're living in. I you know, I it breaks my heart having lost such a, a tremendous companion and, and just brilliant mind. He, he brought such joy to people with his ales. I wonder if, oh no, it might be too much to ask. If hmm. I if I sold these to you, could you make his wines? Perhaps here you would be the the most memorable. It it, it is truly a tremendous wine. I could I could sell you these secret ingredients and perhaps you could spread the same joy throughout the world. You could carry on the legacy of, of Corny the Magnificent. Well, scratch his head. How much you selling them for? Oh, it is all I have of my friend, dear and dear to my heart. And well, you, these were such special ingredients. I, I, I don't know. Could they be sold to you for a hundred gold? <laughs> Well, I hate to say it, but no, no, no. Uh, that's far too big of a gamble for a man like me to take. It's hard enough competing with the halflings. They make some fantastic ales, and they refuse to sell them to me. And you, sir, well, this would be Namish ale of the highest quality. That that Well, but if I don't know, if I don't do it right, I mean, a hundred gold is a lot to gamble. That's pretty much my life savings. Hmm. Well, I'll tell you what. I'm a, I'm a distraught man, and I'm maybe not thinking clearly about the value of these things. I have lost such a dear friend. Perhaps we could come down on that price. I'll give you a severe discount since you, sir, would be carrying on the legacy of my my dearest companion, I give it to you for 75 gold pieces. If I buy these from you, the missus is going to whoop me. She's going to whoop me good. But when you have the greatest ales in town, and you are outselling all the halflings and are the talk of all of this here city, she will love you. She'll give you children. If I live that long... Well, I guess I guess it's up to you. I I could keep I could carry these with me, and perhaps when I am in a more less bereaved mood, I could make use of them myself. Uh, we we are traveling to larger cities. He looks at them. How do you say it works again? You at the end of the process, you. Yes, yes. Uh, steeped in a hard liquor and then added to the end of the molding process. It elevates the flavor. You don't happen to have a sample of this wine left, do you? Um, unfortunately, I do not. Hold on. It's a damn shame. I would have loved to try Malachi, it. Hold on. Hold on, Neil. Wait, would we Malachi. have this ale on him? Yeah, wait, wait, yes. wait. When, in the last episode... He was carrying around his 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 wine skins. Hmm. He was encumbered, right? Did he get? Didn't you? You had the um, extra encumbrance to carry one for him, did you not? Is that a thing? Yeah, Malachi no. carried a. Is it on I think that happened. He gave me his winter blankets instead. <laughs> oh, oh, son oh, of a bitch! I've got two winter blankets. Oh, that's oh. right. Yeah. Okay, I say. Uh, I say. No, unfortunately, it was all lost to the sea. Is is I, I like get a real emotional. It's terrible. It's awful. I I, I feel so. I, I uh, you know I 
75 is too much. You want to make that 50, we got a, yourself a deal. I, th I think on it really, really, really hard, or at least pretend to. Mm -hmm. And and I, I say, well, I you know what? You would be carrying on a legacy of a dear friend. I, I think we can make this work. Well, your friend's name was... Corny. Corny the Corny. Magnificent Gnome. Corny the Magnificent. Well, I'll just have to name this the Magnificent Mold One then. Excellent. Uh, he shakes your hand, has someone watch the bar, and says he'll be right back. Okay. Um, he comes back 20 minutes later with a couple of sacks kind of bulging in his hands. And he kind of shuffles you around the bar and sets them uh, on the counter behind it. They're, you know, one of them's about this big, the other's pretty <laughs> big. And he goes, well, this here's uh, this is what I got. He looks longingly at the money, longingly at the herbs, and then just like slides them a few inches next to you. Okay. This poor bastard. Uh, I, I, I give him the herbs and I, I, I grip him on the shoulder and look him deep in the eyes and say, Thank you. Thank you. You were carrying on a dear legacy to me. And uh, No, I no. Thank, thank you. This will finally put me in competition with them half-sized fellows who make such wonderful ales. Excellent. And uh, I, I pocket the, the coins, put them in my bag, and... Okay, it's worth noting that it is actually uh, 8 gold coins and 420 silver coins. Okay. A lot of coins. You got a fat sack of silver, dude. I have a, I have a couple large sacks and a backpack. I can, I can get it in there. Yeah. Um, coins weigh 50 to the pound. I think you're the only person that needs to worry about that. I don't think I even sure. have 50 coins. 50 coins yeah. to a pound? Yeah. Okay. Which I I'll think is math. very generous. Huh? I think 50 coins to the pound is pretty generous. I think 20 to the pound is probably coins, more coins accurate. Coins are really heavy. Yeah, you yeah. can Yeah. tell me what you want it to be. And no, I'll... the rules is written say 50. So okay. I think okay. basic was 10 per pound. It Oof. was pretty harsh. Might have in, been basic, in basic in basic D D, everything was was weighed as like one coin, right? P weight was measured in oh. coin, yeah. right? So your torches weighed five coins, and you just measured everything based on coins. That's really interesting. You got experience based on your treasure. I, I was going off swords and wizardry, so I, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Um, so, is there anything else you guys want to do, or do you eventually make your way to what's it called? to the to the feather fall which is the inn in town and pass out there i think um yeah we just sleep there and then i think in the morning maybe we'll go and ask about a boat right all right looking to secure passage that that 420 silver might help us get across i yeah. uh i've been trying to find we out about row our our boat across that would take about a week yeah screw that Plus canoes are Think of all the so. combat encounters. Yeah, that sounds I do not good. want to fight anything. We could, on a canoe. we could, uh, we could look at a, at the price of boats. I'd be interested yeah. in, in seeing what passage costs. Okay. Yeah. Well, the next day, um, the next day you wake up in Anvil. It is. Bustling in the morning as people run to and fro, hauling things around. People are out beating their clothes with big sticks, getting the dust out of it. Um, wash is being hung. Kids are being sent off to schools. Church bells are ringing. There's a wedding going on. Uh, all the buildings here are single story. There's a couple of double story, but they're farther off. They look like noble housing. Uh, but everything else is single story. Uh, most things are kind of log cabin style, uh, with a few timber framed bu buildings. Uh, gentlemen, I, I believe uh, our stay here was uh, was fine and well needed and well rested. But what say you? We move on to Redport. I know that Malachi, you must be itching something fierce to to find out what uh, happened to your father. And, uh, I almost got so distracted by the island that I'd forgot our true purpose. But yes, now that I've had time to reflect, I am eager to get port and 
find another boat, perhaps one that doesn't venture so far into the open sea. We've been yeah. through much based on past actions. Yes. It's important that we bring we bring the cleric who cast such a curse on Malachi's father to justice. Uh, Neil, one quick question: mm -hmm. We paid uh, we paid for the voyage that we got shipwrecked on. Mm -hmm. Did we never find the coins anywhere on the island? No. Okay. Probably. Uh, went I was down wondering if that ship. was just like an oversight. No, no, went down with the ship. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so you guys are in the common room of the inn when a younger man comes in, early twenties. And he makes a beeline for you guys. Oh, um, goes actually straight to Croak and says, "Are you, are, are are you the Croak that they were telling the stories about yesterday? That the Croak from the island that fought the the bugbears?" I am indeed, son. Um, he looks around, kind of, you know, suspicious, like, and says, uh, I, "I, I could use your help. Are you, are you the sort of man who's?" Willing to help out strangers in need of help? What is the um, issue? It depends on the type of help you were looking for, son. Speak plainly with me now. It seems that my uh, friends and I have gotten ourselves into a bit of a uh, an unlawful pickle, and we could use a little help getting out of it. Uh, I, I don't want to go to the sheriff with this. We'll get in more trouble than if we, you know, just just stay. I see, I see. The, the adventures of young boys often lead us into interesting places. You, you learn much from your misadventures. T tell me, what, what have you done, son? Well, I got a friend. He's been doing some smuggling of some merchandise. I'd like to keep what the, the, the things involved. I'd like to just keep the, the details to a minimum. The less you know, probably the better for everyone. If I don't know the details, then we refuse, your, we refuse to help. We need to at least know what we're dealing with. My, my friend's a smuggler, and uh, we've been smuggling some things in and out. What things? Of, um, now, now, hold on. Little, little boy, um, what's, your, what's your name? I just can't keep calling you boy. It would be so rude of me. My name is Croak. You, you've known that. What is your name, son? My, my name is Reggie. 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 Excellent, Reggie. Now... These here, these are a powerful wizard and a very prestigious cleric. Now, I know that they will be most helpful in, in this endeavor, but why don't you let me talk with you about this, and I'll let you know whether or not we can help you. Come come walk with me. I, I think I may know what's going on. And I, then I grab I, like his shoulders and just walk out of the bar, leaving you two there. I, I want to grab his arm as he's standing up, because I kind of see that he's trying to push us out of this conversation. And I, I think he interject. Van interjects, saying, "I won't help unless I'm there for the conversation, and I know what it is they're smuggling." I will. I will let you know what it is. I assure you, Van. <laughs> you know. No you know. Maybe. Maybe I should just. I think this has been one of those things. I better just I deal walk with him on out my of own. Bar. I grab him by the shoulders like this, and just like walk him out of the bar. Okay. I I just turn to Malachi and I say, "We're not helping. We're going straight to Redport." <laughs> Let's just see what Croak's got to say. I'm not so much concerned with what he's smuggling. I just want to know who it is we're going to have to deal with. I know so, you are, Ban, but remember how you felt when we burnt those hobgoblins. So I, I walk him to a secluded area somewhere, and I say, Now, Reggie, tell me plain. I know we're in a town full of these little folk that run around, and I know <laughs> that there's more than a few people that'll pay a handsome price for halfling's feet. <laughs> <laughs> You're uh... a... You're, you're a wise fellow there, Mr. Croak. Yeah. I'm a powerful businessman. I, I know uh, I know money when I see it. Now, you just tell <laughs> Croak what your huh. issue actually is. Know that I, I understand these things. Our business partner who, uh, who helps us get these things out of town, well, gets them over the Rock Ridge, or like... Uh, has said that he wants to just take over our business. He has my friend at <clears throat> he has my my friend at Sword Point, and I, uh, I managed to to sneak out on the side. But he's in league with a, a wizard. He and his wizard buddy are two of them are the ones who usually get these things over the hills. Um, but and so you want uh -huh. me to free your business partner from a wizard? 
Well, the the wizard and and the and the muscle, the oh, pair of on. them. I see. I see. Yeah. Uh, really, we we don't. You know, they've they've got my, our whole inventory, and uh, they've uh, got my partner. And I don't think they. I don't know if they'll listen to reason or not. I mean, we've been working great together for years now, and they uh, turn on us here. I guess not years, but a little less than a year, like six months. And they want to muscle in on the supply. I see. And uh, uh, yeah. where where do they have them hold up? I I, I have to ask. Is it just outside of town, maybe a mile or so? There's a, a village, small village. Mm-hmm. Um, Humans only, all human. That's that's where we we uh, keep our store underneath a barn. Um, I don't know how they found us. I mean, there's a wizard. I guess that's how they found us. But they uh, <clears throat> uh, tracked us down there and came in to us when we were looking through our supplies and, and weighing them. And uh, well, all I right, I ran. Um, I got out before. We got I need caught. you to tell me truthful. How many muscle, how much men did uh, this wizard bring with him? J just the two of them. Just, just one man and a wizard? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, okay. And you're a few miles outside of town, right? In a, in a human village? Mm-hmm. And there's a barn where you keep all of your um, merchandise. And uh, they have your friend at uh, Sword Point? They did last I checked, but it's a mile or so out of town. I've been gone a little while. All right. This is kind of now, one of those uh, timely issues. So here's the thing. I will go back into that bar and try to convince Mr. Uh, Malachi and Mr. Van that it is in their best interest to help. Now, this is not a guarantee. And the payment that I will receive for this is your Halfling Feet merchandise. You will be free to continue... Uh, collecting your supply and you can find another carrier over the mountains and continue your business here. Uh, but in order to clear out uh, these uh, mm, untrustworthy, awful business folk, uh, Croak will have to take over your supply of halfling's feet in there. Is this a agreeable arrangement? Uh, that's That's all our business. I understand that, but I look around town. Uh, like, I, I look around. Obviously, we're in a secluded place, but, mm -hmm. like, giving an obvious impression. Like, I see plenty of feet still here for the harvestman. It will be a setback, <laughs> of course, but it is better than going entirely out of business. All right, all right. You, you make a good deal. You get my buddy out of there good and fast, and you make sure no one hears about this, that people hear about this thing. I'll be hung from my neck. Halfling feet is not exactly a... Uh... All right. I will do... What I can to convince my powerful friends. Well, what about that, that that one there they called? What was his name? Um, Van something, Vanderfall. Yeah. Yes. Uh, he he didn't seem too keen on this sort of thing. He no. Like see, a... Well, here I'll let you in on the secret. I'm gonna tell them what you smuggled, and I'm gonna tell them that there's an evil wizard that is trying to take over your business, and. You have learned from this experience that you want no part of this evil business anymore, but you fear for the safety of your friend. And if we stop them, then we were doing good on this world and we're going to end the sale of halfling feet from this town. And then we'll move on. And I'll take the halfling's feet in secret. And we are going to end this wizard and his muscle, effectively uh, putting an end to their trade. But... I will leave you two here, and there's no reason that you have to stop. We're just going to tell Van that you did. And they won't turn me into the authorities? Van is a big believer in second chances. You see, he once, uh, Van once used a scroll against the permission of the church, you see. And he's in the uh, process of redeeming himself for that. Now... I know that uh, it may be hard, but uh, you uh, you can throw yourself at the mercy of Van, and I know that he is a good soul and will give you that second chance. Or you could try to do it yourself, and we'll just leave to Redport. It's kind of up to you, son. 
Mr. Reggie. Reggie, I'm sorry. Okay. Let's let's make it happen. All right. Um, I walk Reggie back to the bar and bring Malachi and Van up to our like room privately. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and I say, so here's the deal. Our uh, boy here, Reggie, he's uh, unfortunately been wrapped up in a dastardly scheme to sail halflings' feet from here to the over the mountains to Redport. Now, he knows that this is an awful thing to do, but there is a powerful, there's a wizard. I don't know his power, but there's a wizard and one other man that are the true enemies here. They are moving the halfling's feet and have forced this poor boy and his friend to help them along in their uh, enterprise. Now, he is asking us to go and help free his poor friend who is being held ransom and being held at sword point as these wizard and his friend are trying to, to muscle them out of town. They have decided that these poor boys, despite um, all the help that they have given in, in defense of their own lives, uh, are no longer of use and are pushing them out. So the way I see it, Mr. Van, there's a great evil in this world in the selling of half leading's feet, and it is our job to go and end this poor practice and help these boys get out of the terrible situation they have been put in by this awful wizard. Will you two please help me help these, this poor boy Reggie and his friend out of this awful situation? Has he told you, you where to go? Feet? Yes, indeed. The, the wizard was using a, a human village about a mile outside of town as a base of operations for these two boys. And that is where they currently have his friend held up. Then I see no reason why we shouldn't simply turn... Did you say Reggie, his name was? Yes. Is Reggie here for the conversation, or is he standing outside? I I thought he came in alone. I just want to double check, that's all. I thought I I was just bringing them up to the room. Okay, yeah, so Reggie's downstairs, not part of this conversation. Then I see no reason not to turn Reggie into the sheriff. Then we can enlist. Then we can enlist the laws help in taking that. You would ruin this boy's. Operation. You would ruin this boy's whole life over an over unfortunate. We're smuggling halfling feet in well, a heartbeat. You see, he is. A, he knows it is an awful situation, and he knows and he, that he did would, it anyways. He had no choice. Would you? You are Do you powerful. That you are a powerful cleric. Now, you could stand up to a wizard if a wizard said, you need to smuggle some halfling feet for me. But I'm sorry, if Mr. Malachi pointed his finger at me and said, you will do this or your life will end in a flash, I would probably be forced to do that. Up until last session, I couldn't have survived that. (laughs) (laughs) Look, Fun, I, uh... For a that this boy was forced into the business. Look, and I don't believe that you not believe attempting in pr- to protect your sin. Do you, or, I just called you crow. Do you not believe in second chances, Van? This poor boy... Did all of the halflings who were slaughtered for those feet deserve second chances? He, they do. And this boy will make sure that they have... He will work his butt off. I've talked with him at length. And this poor boy, he's going to do what he can to help the halfling in this village and make sure that uh, he makes up charitably for the unfortunate crimes that was forced upon him and his friend. I don't believe that for a second. I do think we have business in taking down this operation. I think we should turn him into the sheriff and get the law to help us with that. I'm Look, sure our services would be compensated. Let's, uh, I've got my own motivations here. If we can take down that wizard ourselves, he might have some interesting reading for me. I, I don't we... see why they would keep you from those readings. I'm not I so think convinced. we should. I believe that we should work with the law in this case. I don't what? think we should be going around in the criminal underworld, taking part in this without any sort of help. This Let's is just not deal with this guy ourselves. I'm not scared of this wizard and his friend. We can deal with them. If you want to then turn this Reggie guy into the law afterwards, it's fine by me. I don't care. I want to turn him in right now. We... He's downstairs. We know where he is. Don't give him a chance to run. I don't see why we have to do it right now. Let's just... Uh, we know where to go. Why would we... We can turn him in, go and finish the job. We have 
Well, turning him in or not turning him in doesn't matter to me as long as we do the job on our own. So let's go turn him in right now. I don't care. I, I it's Croak as long as we turn him in. I don't care. I don't care how we topple this operation as long as it ends toppled. Can we not just well then why don't we just go first? topple it right now? Look, if well, the law get their fingers in, they're gonna ask questions. They're gonna man, wanna know what's going this, on. This is the issue with turning him in. This is a matter of timing, right? Right now, we know where they are, and we can go there and end this awful operation if we act right now. We can do this. If we turn him in, involve the law, involve the process, involve a bunch of people, there is a good chance that this wizard and the muscle he brought along will have moved on. And this operation will, while known for now, will find a new supplier. So why don't we, we turn him in, say nothing right of the greater operation, and go take care of it ourselves? Yes, let's go take care of it right now. We don't yes. need to go turn the boy in and waste time. I say turn him in. There's no harm in doing so. We can turn him in after. We can we'll grab turn the him boy. in after. That's the, that's the we agreement, We can grab right? the boy and his friend and turn him in after, if that is the sense of justice you must have. I think they deserve a second chance to live their lives. But if you must turn them in, turn them in. But I do not before we do that, chance. let us go take care of this while we still can. The greater evil here is the, the wizard. It's a matter of timings. And, and Van, the longer we delay, the longer we talk, the longer we talk to the law, the longer they put him in dungeons, the more likely it is that these people have gotten away. We need to act now if we're going to do this. Let's go. I think Van the kind of looks at the floor for a second and says, uh -huh. I have an idea. Come on. And he just kind of walks downstairs. He always does this. <laughs> Croak, uh, Croak let's hear the off. idea first. I mean, the, 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 the show's out of Croak's hands at this point. So yeah, like, I, do do? I think he walks downstairs and walks up to Reggie and says, I don't condone <laughs> of your actions, but I'll give you a chance to redeem yourself. Th thank you, your holiness. I, uh... <laughs> if you would like to be forgiven for your transgressions, then you'll come with us and help topple this operation with sword in hand. I, I, I don't have a sword. We'll get you one. Oh, yeah, yes, 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 your holiness. All right, I like this plan. Let's go get the guy a sword. Oh, where do yeah. I get a sword? Well, buy uh, a sword. I'm sure we'll there's a weaponsmith that we can buy one from. You yeah. live in this town. Where is the weaponsmith? Uh, well, we don't have a dedicated weaponsmith, but there, there's a redsmith nearby. He he occasionally makes a good copper knife. Maybe has a sword lying around. Here, let me show you. He takes right. you to a, a redsmith nearby where you can buy a copper or bronze dagger for normal price. Or if you'd like to buy a copper or bronze short sword, you can buy it for a slightly elevated price because he's got one on hand. Can I Hold buy on. So wait, there's from him? Is iron shortage like a worldwide thing, or is it's it just continent-wide? Yeah. So, okay. for our purposes, Wait, he, has, it's he has an iron sword. No, no, no. Copper or no. Uh, bronze oh. sword. I thought you said he had an iron one for a higher price. No, 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 no. Um, you can buy yourself a bronze short sword for fifteen gold from this guy. Fifteen gold. Five each. We can always just sell it back can once I, we. Can I sword. restock my darts from this guy, Neil? Um, yeah. no, you can buy some dart, you can have some dart heads made. Um, this is not the sort of place, they don't just I'll, have weapons. I'll, I'll ask around. him, uh, sir, how long would it take you to manufacture some darts for me? I can make you probably, probably get you, uh, what, like, three per day? fairly labor-intensive to make those heads. I understand, son, I understand. Per day, you said? Mm -hmm. Well, I think we'll be leaving on the morrow, but I would gladly pay you for three darts um, tomorrow morning before we, we head out. So, yes, go ahead and make those for me. I'll commission them. Excellent, he says. Uh, did you guys buy the sword from him? Five gold each. I'll keep hold of the sword for now. Okay. We'll give it to him when we get there. No, I think we give it to him now because I want to help him learn how to use it. Like on the way? Like yeah, in the like on the way. I kind of want to like show him some moves. Okay, well, so you montage like sword train on the on the way to the... Yeah, because I mean that's a chance like he can move forward, practice his footwork that way. Mm -hmm. Sure. Let's let him lead though. Uh, of course he's leading. He knows the way. We don't. Yeah. All right. Yeah. 
Okay. So he'll he'll lead the way for us. He Should we leads... third break before then, or are we just gonna? Yeah, we're gonna third break there. Okay. Um, this guy Reggie leads the way to this small village just outside of town. Like you walk through the halfling section of town, and you can see a mile away on a slight rise is a, a small village, maybe like twenty families strong. Okay. I um, I kind of lean in toward Croak and whisper to him out of your shot of the others and say. Have you considered the possibility that everything he's told you is a lie and we're walking into a trap? I have considered it. I just missed it out of hand. But I considered it. Okay. You better be right about this. You guys arrive in the village that Reggie tells you is called Tall Fellows. It's human dominated, entirely human. Um, and he leads you towards a dilapidated barn on the far side of town. And why don't we take our break here? We'll see you guys on the other side in just a few minutes. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.